The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 5th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that. And that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, but you've got a question, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a sea of red out there in the face of the U.S. dollar index actually pulling back. So the Dow's up. Maybe this is a liar's poker game. Got the Dow down 170. S&P's off 35. NASDAQ down 182. Russell's off 10. Semis are down 41. Gold is off $3. Silver's off 14 pennies. Light sweet crude is down 60 cents. Natural gas is up 18 pennies. That's a big mover out here today. Up 6%. And the 30 Treasury is down 12 ticks, printed out at 111.04. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside SP plus Corp up 16 bucks, 46%. 96% for Orchid Therapeutics. Lamb Weston Holdings, 8% or 7 bucks. Murata Therapeutics up 3.5. Moon Lake Immunotherapeutics is up 6%. A lot of. Uh, therapeutics companies moving to the upside. To the downside, it's GPO. Aeroportuario, and I know I screwed that up, but I'm not going to screw this up. It's off over $50. That's about a 21% move to the downside. Azimil Holdings is off 14 bucks, 2.5%. Align Technology, 13 bucks, 4%. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. But where we're going to begin today is we're going to begin with what the heck's going on with that good old U.S. dollar index. So let's go take a look at it. We're going to switch panels here. We're going to take a look at really all the currency pairs that uh, make up the U.S. dollar index, as well as the U.S. dollar index itself. So we're looking at the very right-hand panel. We'll just simply expand it out. This is the daily time frame for the U.S. dollar index. What do we have? Well, yesterday we generated, it generated a bear sash candle. That bear sash candle confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It's just usually a pretty solid top out here. And right now what we have is price trading below its green oscillator and change line. That tells us that at this stage of the game, the U.S. dollar has lost its momentum. However, that being said, the U.S. dollar index has got support at 106.101. And that's the next area of support. I presume that that is where price is likely headed to. And if it gets below that, then we may have something of significance here in the U.S. dollar index. And when I say significance, I'm not talking long-term significance. I'm talking really for the week or so. Here, if we take a look at, now let's start with the, uh, the other currency pairs that make it up. The euro being the most important one, that's 57.6% of the weighting. What did the euro do? The euro has a TD nine count bottom that uh, completed yesterday. Price right now is trading above its oscillator and change line. A close above it, which is 1.0507, will signal a move up to 106.73. That will most certainly weaken the U.S. dollar index. If we take a look at the yen, the yen confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator top a couple days ago. Price is trading below yesterday's low. That suggests to you and I that price is going to head lower and maybe going to test that swing point low from a few days ago down at 147.27. That says the U.S. dollar Japanese yen is getting stronger 
and the U.S. dollar index is getting weaker. So our top two weightings are saying the U.S. dollar index should continue to move lower. If we take a look at the Great British Pound, yesterday it confirmed a buy the D point pattern. Why? That was a key reversal bar. A key reversal bar needs three things specifically. You must be in an extended condition. Well, all I have to do is open up this chart here for the Great British Pound, and you can see we're at an extended condition. Number two. You've got to exceed the low of the prior bar and the high of the prior bar. Well, that took place for certain. And then number three, you've got to close at least one tick, one pip, one something, one penny, at least in the opposite direction of the trend. Well, it most certainly did that as well. So the Great British Pound is suggesting to you and I that it wants to go take on this little junior swing point, and that's from 929. And that range out there is between 1.218 and 1.227 out there. Those are the only three currency whereas we're going to spend any time on. But each of these is suggesting that the U.S. dollar index should weaken out here. So why is the market, why is gold and silver trading lower? Hmm, something to think about. Now, we'll close this set of charts out. We'll go take a look at the intraday charts here for the U.S. dollar index. We'll do that for the, well, that's not it. We're going to come back to those charts, but let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index here. Now, we can see that on an intraday basis, let's look at a 30-minute time frame chart. What do we have out here? We've really got nothing other than price testing yesterday's low. So we've got a little bit of a consolidation here um, inside a 30-minute time frame chart for the U.S. dollar index. So what I don't have is any kind of a bottom signal on any type of intraday chart out here. But we do have price below profiles, like on a five-hour chart. That says 105.68 is game. Uh, this uh, says 105.72. That's the four-hour chart. Two-hour chart says uh, 105.87 is game out here. So it sure looks like the Stevie that the U.S. dollar index wants to move lower. That's what all the signals are. Again, 106.101 is going to be a key area to be looking at from a test standpoint out there. All right, so we've got that established. Let's go ahead and close that out. Let's go take a look at the euro, which represents, again, about 57, 58% of the US dollar index. Let's see what's going on inside its intraday charts out here, see if there's any other signal. So now we take a look at a 30 minute chart here for the euro. We wanna see this doing uh, is a move higher, which it most certainly is on a 30-minute basis. We don't have any kind of a top, but we can see that price is trading above a profile level. This suggests that the euro wants to continue to move higher on its 30-minute time frame. No top on the 60, no top on the 120 that I see, no top on the 240, um, and no top on the five-hour time frame chart out here. So what we see when we take a look at the euro and on a weekly basis, this is going to become bar number nine of a TD9 count. That says we likely have a weekly TD9 count bottom that suggests a move up to 1.078. That's at least what it suggests out there. So nothing inside the euro suggests that the U.S. dollar index should strengthen, instead that it should weaken. Okay, so we've got that. Now, I do have a question that came in uh, from CODA, wants to take a look at the 10-year Treasury. So I'm going to use, we're going to go to that right now because I've, of the data feed. Let me see. So here we take a look at the 10-year Treasury. We don't see any kind of a top. We see a negated TD9 count top. That TD9 count top that formed on September 27th, pulled back, tested, and rejected that green oscillator and change line. Its momentum was still to the upside. We don't see any kind of a top. As long as price remains about 468 out there, again, we're taking a look at the 10-year a yield out here, it says that it wants to continue to move higher. No topping pattern on the weekly time frame, no topping pattern on the monthly time frame. We're trading above last week's high, we're trading above last month's high out there. All this suggests a further move higher. Right now, Coda, I'd watch 468. That's a key level. If price were to close below that, that could then signal pull back to 422. But right now, the 10 year yield is suggesting to you and I that it wants to continue to move higher. We'll be right back, folks. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's get to some requests that have come in. The first one coming in from Satish. Satish wants to take a look at CRWD, and he's looking for an entry point. And right now what we can see is that you've got a TD9 count top. That formed a couple of weeks ago, and we just have a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside its profile. So you're looking for an entry point. We can see that the bottom of that profile has been tested three different times, and it's held. So to the extent that you're looking for a uh, an entry point, that would be one of them. If price were to close below 159.30 for two consecutive sessions, Satish, we'd be looking to move back to 145.38. On a monthly, a weekly time frame, I should say, we can see how its TD9 count breakdown resistance level has acted as strong resistance. That's at 168.48. Can't bust them up. Try to bust them down. What does that mean? Well, right now that means trying to get back to its oscillator and change line at 158.76. So we know we've got support between 158.76 and 159.30. We don't know if that support will hold or not, but we know we've got support there. What else can I share with you? Quite frankly, there's not much else that I see with inside any of the charts I'm looking at for CrowdStrike out here to assist us. So right now, and you do have this nice wide-ranging bar. Let's see what kind of volume was in there. This is from August 31st, 13 million shares. First time down was with 6 million shares. Next time down was with 2 million shares. The next time down was with 2 million shares again. So that seems to be a pretty decent area. But I don't know that you're going to get out of this like consolidation sideways move. But Satish, that is the answer as we speak right now at 1119 on October the 5th. Your second question was a take look at ticker symbol AMT. And here you're also, that's American Tower, right? You're also looking for an entry point here. So let's get over to that set of charts. And here on a daily time frame, this tells us what? This tells us that... 
This negated a TD nine count bottom pattern yesterday. Uh, yesterday, so the day before was bar following bar number nine made the low. Then yesterday it closed just below that. Today we're trading below that. So that's not the pattern that's in play here. The pattern that's in play is the Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. Don't know how long it will stay there. But what you're looking for for an entry point into American Tower is a bullish reversal candle. Now even if you get that, that does not say you're out of the woods because you're trading below profile. You're trading below the uh, it's red oscillator and change line. But that would be your buy signal. So here, Satish, at least for the next few days, if this continues to move lower in a big way, you could get rid of that uh, Rhodes momentum indicator signal. We can see it triggered right back here in the trading day of September 21st and the very next day it was gone out there. So it's not automatic that a lower move in price is going to retain that pattern. But it is, we do have it right now in a bullish reversal signal, which suggests a further move higher. We got that same type of pattern on the weekly time frame, and we have a wave number seven signal. And on the monthly, you've got a TD9 count bottom that is likely to form at the end of the month. It's still too early to make that call. But odds favor, like 90% when I say odds favor, 90% of the time when you get a successful bar number eight that would qualify for a TD9 count, whether it's a top or bottom, 90% of the time it goes on to complete that pattern. So monthly you're looking good. Weekly's got some potential, and daily is what you're waiting for on CrowdStrike, and that would be that bullish reversal candle. So, Satish, I hope that that helped you out with regard to those two instruments. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Hector and Patty want to take a look at Franco Nevada, FNV. And in the case of Franco Nevada, it completed a TD nine count bottom pattern yesterday. Uh, it was the bar falling bar number nine. That pattern remains in effect unless price were to close below 127.45. So you've got a buy signal there inside of Franco Nevada. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, this is the one that gets maybe a little bit scary. So the B point out here is from that we would use for an A to B equal CD. Uh, that I would use out here is from August 18th, 3 million shares. Last week, as this passed through, there was 2.3, so it was lighter shares. This week, we're only about uh, a little over halfway. You're nearly 2 million shares out here. So uh, it's it's not the most ideal setup with regard to Franco Nevada. It's just suggesting caution out here. Um, but you do have a daily buy signal, absolutely. What should price do? Price should make its way up to the 132.27 level. That is the center of its bullish structure daily profile. If that, if this is only a counter trend, if it were only to be a counter trend rally, hasn't really started yet. If it were to be a counter trend rally, that's where you would expect price to find resistance. If it's more than a counter trend rally, that's where you would expect price to clear. What else can I share with you? Your second question, which I, I was trying to pull up some charts, but I, I just don't have the time to it. The question was, can gold and the dollar move higher? And the answer to that question is absolutely, positively. I will try to get that chart together. I was just looking for it. I couldn't find it. I don't want to have to redo it out here. Uh, I'll look for that chart, and if I can find it, maybe I'll just have to redo it. We can take a look at that tomorrow. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to record the show from 8 to 9. So if you are listening live right now, or listen on the recorded version of this, please join me from 8 to 9 or get some questions in to me early. I'll be happy to take care of uh, those things out there. So uh, so we're set up for tomorrow. So that's with regard to Franco Nevada, Hector. And uh, again, I'll get back to you on the uh, dollar and, the, uh, and gold moving higher at the same time out there. All righty, right now we don't have the gold. We don't have gold moving higher or the dollar. Um, well, actually... You've got the dollar moving lower out there. But I, I understand where the question is coming from. Let's go to the next question, which is coming from uh, Vic, who wrote in earlier, wants to take a look at uranium. And his question was just simply, what are our thoughts? So in the case of uranium, you got a nice hammer candle that formed yesterday. And it formed just above its TD knockout breakout level. Now, it's not a bottom signal. I would prefer that it really gets closer to 2409 or test 2409 and rejects that level. So I don't have a great clue on what uranium is suggesting to us right now. Yes, it definitely tried to form a bottom. A hammer candle tells you that bulls were trying to hammer out a bottom. I mean, that's where it really comes from. But a close below 2445 is going to suggest at least around a 2409. But you could actually get an A to B equal CD to the downside. The reason why that daily chart is a little bit suspect is because the weekly chart has a clear and present danger, and that's called the TD9 count top. However, here's the positive, and this is with regard to yesterday's action and today's follow-through action. 
What Price did do when you get a TD9 count pattern or you get any kind of a topping pattern, all that Price really is given the opportunity to do is get back to see if it can bust through support. That was the entire reason that the oscillator and change line was developed. It's green. Tells us we have a rising price oscillator. That is a bullish condition. Price tests and rejects that level. Tells us we have a rising, it's rising price oscillator above zero out there. Very bullish condition. So its overall signal on the weekly chart is neutral, but we're still cognizant of that top. On a monthly time frame, you're just consolidating with inside its profiles. That range out here, Vic, is between 2010 and 3016 out there. So what's the charts telling us? Honestly, it's telling us that support held um, on the weekly time frame. Support hasn't really been tested on the daily time frame, but that hammer candle. So that's about as clear as I can be. Uh, I can add one more piece of information to us for us to consider. And that is that yesterday was the fourth consecutive lower close out here. Let's see how often we get to four closes. You got to five back here since, since this thing uh, bottom. So we had one seven, one seven consecutive move, one five, another four, one more four, and then yesterday's four. So it gets to the point here, Vic, where it was yesterday's move and then today's move, nothing more than just simply its natural dance steps out there. That is mostly something that is certainly something to consider. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We get back, ready to take a look at natural gas for Coda, Tesla for Coda. We did the 10 year yield. He'd like to take a look at the 30 year bond as well. And for Dan, we're going to take a look at Carvana. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join 
Join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den and Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Still, we've got all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's down 145, S&P's off 29, NASDAQ 100, 155, and the Russell's down 10. Let's go out to Bethesda, Maryland, and speak with Sue. Sue, good morning. How are you today? Good morning. Thank you so much for taking my call. My pleasure. Uh, I have a question about XOM. I have talked spoken to you last time. Yes. Yeah, Go right ahead. It, it's supposed to be. Oh. Yeah, you have a problem. I, you know, they they did, and it said it to a one or eight ninety one, but right. they went right. there and then they come back up again. Which should they going lower? So right now, let's so let's start off. Let's start off with regard. To, I think we talked about this when we talked a couple of days ago. We talked about the yeah. correlation between Exxon Mobil, the energy sector, and Lightspeed Crude. Now we didn't have a time. We didn't run. We didn't actually run that. I'm going to show you the chart right now. This is going to be the correlation chart, just so you can see what's going on. The top panel here is Lightspeed Crude. Now we know about Lightspeed Crude is it's clo it's trading below the bottom of its daily profile out here, and that was at 88.87. So once it lost support, uh, you know we saw Exxon Mobil act the same way and continue to move lower out here. The bottom panel is showing you the directional correlation over a five-day average. When these bars are above zero, it tells us that it has a, a directional correlation, not an inverse correlation. That would be the bottom bars out there. So we can say that Lightspeed Crude and ExxonMobil trade in the same direction probably 95, 97% of the time, somewhere around there. So what in order to find a bottom, we're going to need to not just find a bottom in Exxon Mobil, but we also need to find it in Lightspeed Crude. Does does that does the chart that I'm showing you does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm sharing with you? Yeah, I, 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 yes, I guess. Okay, okay, perfect. All right. So. Okay, so so we got that. I want to make sure we've got that out of the way. And the reason why I want to do that is you're calling about Exxon Mobil, but because of this directional correlation. We also want to go take a look at Lightspeed Crude. So we're going to do that. I'm going to switch over. We'll come back to ExxonMobil, but let's go see what Lightspeed Crude is doing. We know that it closed below the bottom of its daily profile, but the question is, where is it likely headed to? Where is the next level of support, basically? So now we pull up these charts out here. We take a look at the daily time frame. I'll just simply expand it out. The daily time frame says to us that Lightspeed Crude wants to target 78.94. That is the last place where it broke out from. We're trading 82.65 out here. So if that is the case, and that is going to move lower, so too should ExxonMobil. It doesn't tell us how far lower ExxonMobil should move, but it does say that at this stage here, we've broken through support on that daily basis. The next level on a daily time frame is 78.94, and we would say that uh, ExxonMobil would likely not bottom until we get down there. Now, what's going on in the intraday? Well, first on a long-term basis, longer term, meaning the weekly, there's actually an A to B equals CD to the upside inside of Lightspeed Crude. So perhaps when price pulls back to 78.94, that A to B equals CD pattern will resume out there. Don't know for sure. Uh, of concern, but it's it's a it's a, it's a light concern this at this stage. And the reason it's light is because it's only October fifth. But when I look at the monthly time frame chart, if we did get a bearish reversal candle, this would confirm a Rogeman indicator top. And those are pretty significant, especially when they show up on the longer term charts out there. So now let's pull this, try to pull this together. One, we believe that Lights Recruit is headed back to its TD9 count breakout level of 78.94. Let's go see where the breakout level is on Exxon Mobil so that you can prepare for that or potentially prepare for that. And that level here on Exxon Mobil on a daily time frame, we're not that far from it, is 108.42. So that is the next level of support. Exxon Mobil today got down to a low of 108.87. 
Now, what I can't, what I don't know, what e each of us don't know, is whether if price gets to 108.42, whether it's going to hold or not. If it doesn't hold, then we're likely headed lower. The headed lower to where I would look at the weekly time frame chart that has a TD9 count, and right now it's going to, it looks like it'll form a Roadsman to Indicator top. That should take Exxon Mobil back to 104.57. So we know Lightsweet Crude is, is, is likely to head lower. We know where it broke out from. Exxon Mobil should target 108.42. Sue, so if that level fails, we should see Exxon Mobil get back to the 104.57 area. And if 104.57 uh -huh. fails, um, then we're down into the 84.58-ish range out there. Is, is, um, uh, does that, is, uh, is there anything that's Should confusing? Get, get dumb, then. <laughs> Say that again? Should I just take it, take, take loss then? Well, I don't. Uh, it now it's 108. Yeah. You know, um, it's 109.60 right now. Um, oh, yeah, 109. You know, I, I, I supposed, I, supposed to be one o eight ninety one. That when we spoke a few days 108, ago. Uh, well, one o eight forty two is what I've got as the key support level. Um, you know, the the issue is so it's it's a great question, and you've been in it for a while, so you've got to make the decision that is most certain. Yeah, not that long. Not that long. So you've got to make I, a decision. Yeah, that, because I pay a very high price. <laughs> right. Yeah, you got it up at the highs. You know. How I would be looking at this, and I don't know how much heat you take in Exxon Mobil, 78.94 should be an area where Lightsweet Crude finds support, but coulda, woulda, shoulda. Um, until Lightsweet Crude really breaks a key level of support, I'd be more inclined to sit on it. But you've got to really, it's your money, you know, and you've got to protect, you've got to protect those assets out there. So I, I can't, I don't know that I can share much more with you than what I have shared at this stage of the game. Um, I would also suggest that, no, I can't, I can't say that just yet. Well, here's what I would share with you. If you see a close in Lightspeed Crew today, below 82.35, that's going to be a signal that it's definitely headed lower and headed towards that 78.94 level. So, Sue, I, I hope that that information really helps you out. I feel for you. Um, but it looks yeah, like you're still. Cool. It is there in 35. It supports so, that level hole. Correct? It, it, in in Lights Recruit, it's 78.94. For Exxon Mobil, the level that so you're looking it, for. Yeah. 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 The, the, and you need to. Be, uh, the Exxon Mobil will hold it. What you're looking at is 108.42 is its next key level of support. If that fails, 104.57 would be where it would be targeted. Okay? Oh, my goodness. Okay, I appreciate that so much. Thanks, you, thanks for your you, help. You bet, and uh, thanks so much for calling. That was Sue in Bethesda, Maryland. Let's go take a look at natural gas. That uh, is a request coming in from Coda, so we'll get over to those charts here momentarily. So as I get my cursor to work. And lights we crude looks like it's uh, breaking out to uh, lights we crude natural gas. Did I say lights we crude? Must have lights we crude on my mind. We're taking a look at natural gas now. What it's doing right now? Let's open up the daily time frame chart. The daily time frame chart does have a wave seven bottom signal that formed out here. Well, that was confirmed on September the 27th. That's a very small portion of the Chapman wave, but it's an important portion of it. And right now, what we've got is a wave seven bottom with price taking out profile resistance. It has tried to take out profile resistance two other times. If if it closed above 3.072 today and tomorrow, that's going to signal that natural gas should make its way up to 3.432. 3 that is its TD9 count breakdown level. We are looking at the natural gas November contract. If you are trading the UNG, go find out what contracts are in there. Odds favor, it's not just November. So you need to know what's going on in the contracts inside of UNG. That's different than just looking at UNG like Coda and I just did out here. So we know where price is likely targeting, and uh, a, a, another key level of resistance is going to be above 342 and be at about the 3.68 level. Code, I hope that, hope that helps you out with regard to natural gas. We'll take a look at Tesla when we get back to this one. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's down 140. s and off 27. We're taking a look at Tesla. This is for code inside the Tiger's Den. So Tesla, when we take a look at this chart here, code, I'm going to start on the very right-hand side, monthly chart. Monthly chart shows that price has made its way up to a support or resistance level, and that is its monthly oscillator and change line. So that may be why price is kind of stuck right here. That number, by the way, that print is at 257.86. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart. What we have is a consolidation with inside its profile levels. That's between 232.35 and 272.32. It does have a TD9 count top that formed out here the week of July 21st. Price pulled back. Test it actually broke through support. It's bullish structured weekly profile, but that was for one week. The following week, it got back inside there. So at this day, and then a new profile formed a couple of weeks ago. So right now, on a weekly basis, really on a daily basis, and I'll say on a monthly basis, you got a good old fashioned consolidation between 232.35 and 272.32, with right now price testing monthly resistance. The resistance area on the uh, daily time frame, where is it? You're above profile levels. Um, this TD9 count breakdown area was taken out once, so I can't really call that resistance. I just have to get up to its swing point from back on September 15th. And that range is from 271 to 277.55. So I just think you've got a good old-fashioned consolidation right now. Watch those weekly profiles, that weekly oscillator and change line for additional clues out there. So I hope that that helps you out. Uh, I believe you or somebody wanted to take a look at the 30-year Treasury. So let's go take a look at the 30-year. The request was to take a look at the monthly time frame which we'll do 
but we will also take a look at the other time frames out there because those are the charts I'm going to pull up. So if you give me just a moment here, we'll see the 30-year Treasury. On a monthly basis, though, let's get up and answer that question. On a monthly basis, we can see that we are trading below last month's low. All right, so we know that that is a bearish signal. We also see out here, I just have to would have to restart this. So that those trend lines must have gone something more like, eh, that's not the trend line. That's for sure. So we're just going to skip the trend lines right now. I have to come back and draw those in. That doesn't matter. So what do we have pattern-wise on a monthly basis? Well, first, there's a breakout area. So the next breakout area on a monthly basis is down at 109.06. Did we get down there? Pretty close, but we haven't gotten there. So that should be an area of support. It's not a guarantee. You can see we've crushed through other TD9 count breakout levels, but that would be a next area of support. What's needed on a monthly basis to confirm a bottom is going to be a bullish reversal candle because you have a rose momentum indicator signal um, that is uh, present at the uh, moment. So I know you were looking for the monthly information. The daily, the weekly chart also shows a wave number seven bottom. The last bottom that formed out here inside the 30 year was a wave seven bottom. So we'll want to keep our eye on that. Now, in order for that, uh, to a form, you have to have a higher low, so that early, so that would confirm would be next week out there. On a daily time frame, you don't have any kind of a, a bottom signal out here. It suggests that price wants to continue to move lower because you are below profile and below red oscillator and change line. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the 30 year. Now, folks, we got a treat for you. We've got the man, Mr. Larry Pesavento, on the line as well. Just wants to say hello, Larry. Thanks for calling in. How are you feeling these days? <laughs> Hey, I'm feeling better. This is the four days. I've had the big C here since uh, Monday. And okay. The doctor said it'd probably take about seven days, but I'm feeling okay. I no, you know, I don't have any nothing serious. Just a, you know, clogged up head, and uh, I've never sound... been able to think very good anyway. So the doctor could use that as a gauge. Hey, <laughs> well, you sound, you sound, you, yeah, you sound good. You sound good. You sound good. You know, well, you don't sound like you have congestion or anything. If we go below 42.35 and at S&P futures, yeah. we'll be very careful because we could drop 100 points in a, in a matter of a uh, very short time because th this real, we're, the bond market's the problem, Steve. Uh, there's just nothing Absolutely. there. The, the Fed is screwed. China's screwed. We're screwed. People want their money. They're not getting it, so that's what's going to happen. They're going to have a big move down in those bonds, probably a 103, 105, somewhere in that ballpark before it bottoms. Yeah, there's there's no not. doubt. There, there's no doubt when you take a look at um, yeah. uh, some of the uh, data that the uh, Treasury does provide. Um, you know, China is just they're in yeah. the mode of just dumping bonds. They're just dumping them. Yeah. So, also, yeah. So, you know, the crude oil, you know, they were telling us about hundred dollar barrel, just like they did at two hundred dollars a barrel. Well, that's top. And, it, it has. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Go down to about 60 something. Anyway, listen, I just want to call in to everybody and not to worry about me. I'll be back Monday. God Perfect. willing. Perfect. Well, we think you sound great, so you're well. You're welcome to do the show today, even with a clogged head. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no? yeah, so All right. Talk. All right. Our, talk our to best. You later, brother. Thank our, you, folks. You See you later. Bye-bye. Yeah, thanks for calling in. Larry Pesavento. Um, let's get on to our, our next request out here. So I think we've covered everything inside the 30-year Treasury out here. You can see on a short-term basis, when I say short-term, I'm looking at a 240-minute and a two-hour chart here. So they have roads meant to indicator signals. They're suggesting that the 30-year ought to get up towards the 112.24, 113.24 level out there. So I do, do hope that it helps you out with regard to the review of the uh, 30 year. Let's go to our next request out here. This is coming in from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Mr. ABCD himself. He wants to take a look at Carvana. CVNA is the uh, ticker symbol. So we'll get up there momentarily. I believe that is on this chart. Yep, it is. So we'll take a look at Carvana. What do we see? We see that right now price is trading below a key level of support. That is a TD9 count bottom that formed back on August 17th. That low out there is at 36.42. If Carvana closed below 36.42, it is suggesting to you and I that it wants lower price because it will have taken out a prior area of resistance, and I don't have any kind of a bottoming signal. In fact, what we probably have, I don't know if the retracement is enough. Um, let me try to take a look at that on my other system. So real quickly here. Is this forming an A to B equals CD to the downside? So to answer that question, I just want to understand what the potential retracement is. Well, I can't get this to operate. There we go. So here, oh, my goodness, it's hard. Okay, now now I can do that. Sorry, sorry for this little delay here, folks, but that's what happens sometimes. So the, as I look at this, yeah, that, this would be the A to B equals CD. So the retracement here, 
was only 24%. So I, I said, the retracement would have been really between where it's labeled C and the following bar, Dan. So I'm going to say we don't have an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. You're in bar number four. You're trading below a prior area of support in the swing point. So if we close below that level, what this is suggesting to you and I is Carvana wants to make its way back to 24.68. On a weekly time frame, price is trading below its bullish structured weekly profile. So we know a close below 38.46 would not be a good thing. And that could suggest getting all the way back to $8.86 .80, out there. That's what we see when we take a look at the weekly chart. Monthly chart, not a lot here to assist us with other than the fact it looks pretty good. Uh, although we're trading below last month's low, so we would have to discount that comment. Looks pretty good. Um, so it looks to me like what Carvana is signaling to you and I, Dan, is it wants to head lower. And at this stage here, until some other pattern forms, 2468 will be the target. So I hope that that helps you out. Johnny D took a long position inside the GDX, wants to take a look at it, what it's doing. And that sounds good, unless price closed below yesterday's low. Why? Because yesterday's low was a TD nine count bottom, it was the bar following bar number nine. So so a close below 25.62 is going to suggest a run lower. Run lower to where? Well, 22.58 would not be out of the question. That happens to be the monthly TD nine count breakout level. Now there's A to B equals CD to the downside patterns that are already confirmed out here inside of the GDX on a weekly basis. So you really need that daily TD nine count pattern to hold out there. If it doesn't, there's your A to B equals CD. So it's made the one to one move out here and it needs a bullish reversal candle. But short of that, 2258 becomes a target only if yesterday's low gets taken out. On the positive side, it looks like the U.S. dollar index is going to pull back and the GDX should go target 2678 to the upside. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. A couple more requests that we've got in. Uh, the first one from a guppy wants to take a look at the SMH. Is his specific question where is support and resistance? Easy enough for us to figure out. Support is at 143.72. That is the daily oscillator and change line. That level was tested. So far, it's been rejected. If price closes below that, the next area of support will be 141.81. Resistance, because price is trading above the top of its daily profile, we then look to the weekly profile. When we look at that, we can see price is trading below the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. Resistance then is at 147.55. If price can move above that, we're looking at about 153.61. So that's your support and your resistance for the semis out there. McGuppy, I hope that that uh, provided you with the information that you were looking for. The last request coming in from the Tiger's Den. I didn't write down who this came from. Might have been Inno who wanted to take a look at the Qs. We're going to take a look at the NQ. So let's get over to that uh, set of charts out here. And the 30-minute time frame for the uh, NASDAQ is actually bullish right now. So we take a look at the uh, TAS market breadth. We have 50 trading, 50 instruments trading above resistance, 9 trading below support. So the 30-minute has bullish market breadth. Now, we don't have a bottom signal, but it was really in honor of Larry Pesavento who called in the show. If we take a look at the retracement on a 30-minute chart from its low at about 3.30 in the morning, this was yesterday, up to the high that came in. At 8.30 this morning, well, guess what we've got? We have a 0.618 retracement out there. And so price is bouncing off of that. What the uh, uh, NQ is likely to do out here, just at least intraday, is uh, bounce up towards that 14.845 level. No idea if it can take that out. If it can, then we likely continue to head higher. Now, the other four time frames, 60, 240, daily and weekly, they all have bearish TAS market breadth out there. So this could be just simply a short-term trade, you know. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Don't forget, tomorrow I'm going to be live from 8 to 9, so please join me early for tea and crumpets and anything else that you'd like for breakfast. Have a terrific Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Take care. Be safe out there.